So I'm here tonight to talk to you about urban resilience and transforming Edmonton to a resilient city. So when I'm speaking about resilience, I'm really talking about our urban system's ability to survive and thrive amidst and recover and bounce back from sudden shocks or long-term stresses and undergoing change. So it's a really small topic that I'll try to cover quite briefly, and it's important due to two main challenges we're facing globally, one being climate change. So currently, contrary to what some people might be saying, Canada is undergoing climate change. We're experiencing a warming rate of approximately two times that of the global average. And while we might not know exactly what that means for us, specifically, we know that change is happening. Another issue facing us is urbanization. Currently, about 50% of us live in urban settlements, and that's expected to grow to 75 or 70 to percent or more by 2050. So this means that the choices that cities and people living in them make will have an even bigger impact on our urban climate and environment. So what does this mean for Edmonton? Well, we might see more frequent and intense rainfall while also seeing more severe and long-term droughts. Our winters might be getting warmer, which to be honest sounds fantastic, but it could change the type of snow we're seeing, which could impact things like cross-country skiing or backyard rinks, for example. So the city is responding to climate change in two ways. First, to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, and second, to prepare for the realities of a changing climate. So when I'm talking about resilience, I'm speaking towards that, preparing and adapting to sudden shocks or extreme long-term stresses that we're expecting from climate change. So while the city is working towards increasing our capacity to respond to change, we can't do it alone, and all of us needs to be aware and thinking and acting on this. And the time to act is now, because we are right now building cityscapes that will be here for the next 70 years or more. And so the choices and decisions that we make today will affect our future abilities. And around the world, cities are leading the resilience charge, but we have to make sure that everybody in our cities and moving to our cities understands this and is aware. So we have to translate this global work into meaningful outcomes for local people. So what does it even mean to be resilient? Sorry. Well, imagine if we worked even harder to protect our ecosystems so that they continue to provide us with goods and services like flood mitigation or water filtration, so that we don't have to spend so much of our money on engineering solutions. We can steer our cities toward resilience by truly valuing our ecosystems. When the 1915 flood hit the North Saskatchewan, Edmonton decided to, as much as we could, limit development in the River Valley to protect and maintain this natural flood protection asset. So as a society, we need to continue to be reflective on the past and learn from the past, and also keep in mind that this might mean completely departing from the way that we have always done things and what we know. Imagine a system with enough spare capacity that it can maintain essential functions while undergoing extreme events or an increase in demand. The loss of biodiversity that we are experiencing on a global scale is really impacting our ecosystem's ability to function. And so we can do our part by making these systems more robust by protecting our own urban species. We also want to be redundant for resilience, just not in our jobs. We want to make sure that if one thing fails, there's a backup. So if we have a mix of energy sources, as an example, we can maybe continue to stream Netflix even if one electricity source is no longer there. Urban resilience also means being flexible in our approaches and our response to change. So we need to think about new ideas. If we don't have enough land for urban agriculture, maybe we should look at our buildings and our rooftops instead. But we also have to think about our soft solutions, not just technical ones, and how can we integrate our hard and our soft systems. Utilizing the sharing economy is an example of a good resourceful soft strategy. So having cars or bikes like our own Edmonton's Pogo or Vancouver's Bike Share helps to conserve resources by letting people get away from personal ownership while also hopefully encouraging different ways of moving around our cities. And our people are a key element of resilience. Um, you just have to look at how people responded during last year's devastating fires up north or the 2013 floods to know that resilient people really build resilient communities. So we need to be more inclusive in our resilience planning and we need to build actual real strong and empowered connections with everyone. So think of a neighborhood that combines different land uses, different people, different economies, different transportation methods. 
Our urban systems are highly complex and they integrate infrastructure, social, economic, and environmental systems. And so we need to be integrative and interdisciplinary in our approach to resilience planning. Words used in this line of work like complexity and holistic and sustainability are all really, really good at stopping change because they're conceptual, they're kind of daunting, and it's wicked problems that seem impossible to solve. But Edmonton is a city of innovators, and I think this innovative spirit can really help us to build creative and on-the-ground real resilient solutions. So these qualities that I've briefly mentioned that help us build towards urban resilience may seem like they require some changes, but here in Edmonton, we're very used to change. We experience extreme seasonal differences, and we're even able to find the beauty in those changes. So we know that our city is adaptable. Change may also seem scary and negative, but it really doesn't have to be. We didn't stop the shift from horse-drawn carriages to modern-day cars, and maybe electric cars or even autonomous cars one day, um, just because they're different. Our societies embrace this shift. So while great cities of the past may have waged war on nature, I think the great cities of the future will be those who are fighting to protect it. And the message I want to leave is that we cannot run away from climate change and the problem. We have no choice but to run towards the solutions. And through this, we'll make our city and ultimately our country better able to face an uncertain future. So as Edmonton and Canada look to the next 150 years and more, we know that there will be change, changes to our environment and to our society. But there is opportunity in every change, and with many people embracing these qualities, we can transform into something even more inspiring, beautiful, and special. So let's be resilient, Edmonton. Thank you.